Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkham Duel. Since we're going to be doing a Raid Raptor deck profile. So I'm really excited for this one because this deck is actually crazy and has done a complete overhaul of what the previous build was because of the new support that came out in Phantom Rage. This deck actually had about 25 cards difference from my previous build, which is pretty crazy. But seeing as how my last build was kind of an Ultimate Falcon Turbo build, it's not surprising. So without further ado, guys, don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on there so you can come part notification squad and definitely check out the patreon down the description below because we have some awesome words you guys like getting your name description for every single video getting a signed card sent in the mail or even getting a twisted deck profile every single month to your patron along with test hand so without further ado guys Let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing three of the new Raiders Wing. So this card is really cool and is probably just surely for the artwork, my new favorite card out of the entire set of Phantom Rage. This card is really good because it's always treated as a Phantom Knight and a Raid Raptor monster. And it has the ability that if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can detach the material from a dark Xyz monster and then special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. And you can only use its effect once per turn and an xz monster whose original attribute is dark that used this monster as a material to summon it makes its ability your opponent cannot target this card with card effects it makes the monster that uses this card as a material to summon it untargetable which is super cool we then play three of the new card of the strangle lanius this card is really really good that it has the ability if you control a dark monster you can still summon this card from your hand also, you cannot special monster for the rest of the turn, except dark monsters. And if you control an Xyz monster with a dark Xyz material, you can uh, target one level four or lower Raid Raptor monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but its effects are negated, which is a really good effect. This card is ridiculously good, and I absolutely love this card. We then play three copies of Tribute Lanius. Tribute Lanius is really good, and it is going to be getting a reprint, I think, in Ghosts of the Past next year. So be out for the lookout for that one. They have confirmed it, but if you want to go ahead and pick this down, up this card is a little bit expensive right now but if you want to play it it's well worth it because what this card does is during your main phase you can uh when it's normal or special summon you get to send a raider after monster from your deck to the graveyard and then during your main phase two if this card destroyed in bonds monster by battle you can add one rank up magic quick play spell from your deck to your hand and also you cannot uh, special summon for the rest of the turn except for raid raptor monsters not that big of a deal but still a really good card we then play three copies of vanishing lanius vanishing lanius is a really good card because you can once per turn during your main phase if this card was normal or special summon you can normal summon or you can special summon a raid raptor monster from your hand which is really cool that's level four or lower we then play three copies of pain lanius pain lanius is ridiculously good it lets you target a raid raptor on your side of the field and then you lose life points equal to whichever is lower between the attack and defense or defense so for example if i had raider's wing that has zero that has zero attack i would lose zero life points to target it or if i was targeting a copy of for example a copy of the tribute lanius i would lose 400 because 400 is the lower of the two attack or defense values then you special summon this card and then whichever monster you target it it becomes that level so for example if i targeted my copy of the tribute or the raider's wing or strangle or any of these monsters and it becomes a level four monster which is really cool i love that effect to be able to become a level four monster and it's just an overall really good card we then play two copies of mimicry lanius i still believe that two is fine i probably you really don't need three because you're only going to be using the graveyard effect on this card uh, because what it has, what it does is when it's sent to the graveyard, then you get to banish it from your graveyard to add a Raid Raptor uh, card from your deck to your hand, which is a really good effect. Don't get me wrong, but you really only need it twice. You're never going to use it a third time, and you don't want to draw this card ever. We then play two copies of the new Heal Eagle. Heal Eagle, I would definitely play as a three of, but I like it as two right now because I'm playing some hand traps in this deck. That if all monsters you control are Raid Raptors, minimum one, you can special summon this card from your hand, and you can manage this card from your graveyard to target a Raid Raptor spell or trap in your graveyard and add that target back to your hand really good card great for using as a link material but you're never going to use it for xz summons because it's a weird level three monster we then play a single copy of necro vulture uh, vulture is really good because what this card does is you can tribute it and then you can tribute a raid raptor monster then you get to target one rank up magic spell in your graveyard and add it back to your hand and also you cannot xz summon for the rest of the turn except with rank up magic spells which is not that big of a deal but it's a really good one of just to be able to get your rank ups back from the graveyard 
We play a single copy of Singing Lanius. Singing Lanius, if you control a Xyz monster, you can special summon this card to your side of the field, which is pretty good. One Zaphros the Elite. Zaphros the Elite comes in pretty handy in the deck as well, because if you control, if it's in your graveyard, then you can once per duel banish, or not banish, but uh, bounce a card from your side of the field back to your hand, and then take 400 points of damage, and then you can special summon it back, which is pretty good. And then for the last monster outside of the hand traps, we're going to be playing a single copy of Silent Boots, which is very similar to my Black wing deck if you guys haven't seen that video you definitely should check that out but what this card does basically is you can banish from your graveyard to add a uh, phantom knight monster or phantom knight spell or trap from your deck to your hand which is really good to activate or add that phantom knight spell or trap from your deck to your hand because you play plenty of them in this deck because they've kind of made the raid raptor and phantom knight engine or phantom knight cards almost the same and you can special summon it from your hand if you control a phantom knight monster which also your uh raider's wing counts as a phantom knight monster so that's really cool so that's over the monster let's get into the hand traps so for the hand traps we're going to be playing three copies of ash blossom as normal the three ash blossoms are super helpful in the deck just to stop your opponent from all sorts of shenanigans and two copies of effect failure because you don't want to play impermanence in this deck too much because it does kind of hinder your copies of the phantom knights of shade brigadine you don't want to stop that card effect so you just play this card as a two of instead of playing impermanence it's totally fine i don't see any issue when i play the copies of valor over the copy of impermanence and plus it's a little bit more of a budget option anyways so that's it for the hand traps guys let's get into the spells so for the spells we are going to be playing a single copy of monster reborn monster reborn just helps us extend in this deck so you want to play this card as a one of we play a single copy of foolish burial because you can send your copy of any of your raid raptors to the graveyard that you particularly need essentially you're going to send mimicry to the graveyard to get its search effect and then for the other cards that we're going to be playing in this deck we're going to be playing a single copy of raid raptor nest if you control two or more raid raptor monsters you can add one raid raptor monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand which is pretty good just to search those cards and get them back into your hands so you can use them again and then for the rank up magic spells which is going to be kind of the powerhouse of the entire deck this deck is very focused on we're going to be playing a single copy of the phantom knights of rank up magic launch you play this as a one of that lets you during the main phase you get to target a dark exes monster you control with no exes materials and then you'd spell summon one dark exes monster that is one rank higher than that monster you control by using that monster as a material which is pretty good to be able to just rank up by one rank um, to be able to get the particular monster that you need onto your side of the field. We have plenty of different options in the deck to go into with this card, and I absolutely love it to be able to go into so many different options in this deck uh, with this card, especially going into the Requiem Dragon with this card. We then play a single copy of Skip Force. Skip Force is a one of now. I know that's kind of crazy for me. Like it feels weird to just play one copy of Skip Force. Um, I've seen a lot of builds, and a lot of players have just dropped this card altogether but I still like it as a uh, one of in the deck because it can help you get into your copy of your air raid and it can get into your copy of your revolution falcon pretty easily and it can also help you get into ultimate falcon if you do go all the way into a satellite cannon falcon by different means so this card's still a good one of to me I don't think I would drop it but it's still pretty good we play a single copy of soul shape force uh, soul shape force is searchable really easy to get out of your deck summons infinity really easily if you want to summon infinity in this deck and it's just an overall good card you have to pay half your life once target raid raptor in the graveyard spell summon it back to your side of the field and then summon an xyz monster that is two ranks higher than the one you already had we then play two copies of the phantom knights of rank up magic force rank up magic force is probably the best rank up magic in the entire deck now because it has the ability that during the main phase you can banish one or more dark monsters from your graveyard and then you get to target one dark xyz monster you control and special summon your extra deck one the phantom knights raid raptor or xyz dragon xyz monster with a rank equal to that target's uh, rank plus the number of banished materials so for example if you have a rank four on your side of the field you banish Banish three from your graveyard or four from your graveyard and you get to summon a rank seven or a rank eight if you banish three you special summon a rank seven on top of the rank four because you banish three because three plus four is seven if you banish four four plus four is eight so it depends on how many materials you banish depends on what you get to summon and this card is a quick play spell which is super helpful for the deck to be able to search in different scenarios so that's it for the spells guys let's get into the traps so for the traps, we are going to be playing a single copy of Raptor, or Raid Raptor's Phantom Knight's Claw. I like this as a one of in my Raid Raptor deck because it's really easy to search this deck because it has Raid Raptor and Phantom Knight's in the name. 
And also it's a speed spell three counter trap, which I think is really cool that this deck actually has now. That when a monster or effect is activated, you can detach the material from one of your dark XZs and negate the activation to destroy it. And then if you detach a material was a Phantom Knight, Raid Raptor, or Dark or XZ's Dragon, and one Raid Raptor XZ's monster you control gains attack equal to the destroyed monster's original attack as well, which is pretty good just to give that extra boost and negate a monster effect. We then play two copy or one copy of Fog Blade. You play one copy of Fog Blade because you search it very very easily in the deck and two copies of shade brigadine shade brigadine i play as a two of in this deck instead of the double fog blade because i would prefer to have the materials opposed in the negate because this deck already has plenty of ways to negate in the extra deck and plenty of cards that just don't care about monster effects at all and you already have so many hand traps in the deck i would prefer to have the extenders opposed to this in the deck as well so it's just super helpful if you want to play two copies of fog blade and two copies of brigadine you can drop the copy of the phantom knight claw and play another copy of fog blade if you want to go that route but i like it at this particular ratio so that's it for the main deck guys let's get into the extra deck so for the extra deck we're nothing a lot of the deck has changed in the extra deck so we're going to open up with two copies of wise tricks wise tricks is really good in this deck and you have to play this card at two what it does is if it's Link Summoned, you can special summon a level four Wing Beast Dark Monster from your deck, but its effects are negated, which is always usually going to be Zaphros the Elite, um, because you can bring it back to your side of the field. And if a Raid Raptor Xyz monster you control's effect is activated, you can set a Rank Up Magic spell directly from your deck, and if it's a quick play, you can activate it the same turn it was act or sent or the same turn it was set, which is a really cool effect to be able to just use. Um, and then we also play a single copy of Rusty Bardige for the only other Link monster in the entire deck. It's very simplistic and what it's trying to do you're trying to either get rusty bardige and you're trying to climb your way into having fog blade set and extenders on your side of the field and this card is just a great extender to send your copy of your rusty or your copy of boots to the graveyard to be able to grab fog blade and a copy of the phantom knights of shade brigadine we then play two copies of the four strix four strix can detach a material to search a level four uh dark wing beast from your deck to your hand which is really good and this is the card that you're usually going to make under wise strix to trigger wise strix's effect so you're essentially going to get a search off of this and a search off of this just by activating the copy of four tricks you play a single copy of revolution falcon and a single copy of air raid because these cards are really really good together this card can single-handedly board wipe a field of special summon monsters and then the air raid can special summon it to your side of the field because it has the ability that if this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard then you can special summon a phantom or a uh, raid raptor revolution falcon from your extra deck and if you do you attach this card as material so you always summon usually air raid first and then you go into revolution falcon after we do play a single copy of arsenal falcon I haven't played this card until this particular build. Um, and this card's really, really good. I just didn't have a way to actually summon it until we got the Force, uh, the Phantom Knight Force um, quick play, which is really, really good to summon this card. Because this card has a really neat effect that lets you, once per turn, detach a material from it, especially summon a level 4 Wing Beast monster from your deck. And if this card it has any number of Raid Raptor monsters as a material, you can attack up to that many times during each battle phase. And if this card is sent to the graveyard while it has a Raid Raptor Xyz monster, a Raid Raptor um, monster as a material, you can special summon one Raid Raptor Xyz monster from your extra deck, except another copy of itself. And if you do, you attach this card from the graveyard to that monster as a material, which can be your copy of Ultimate Falcon usually. Usually. We then play a single copy of Satellite Cannon Falcon because you can upgrade into Satellite Cannon Falcon very easily and it board wipes like Harpy Feather Dusters the field. And then you play a single copy of Ultimate Falcon as well. Ultimate Falcon can really tear up a game because this card is unaffected by every other card effect, which is actually insane. And also, it can deal a thousand points of damage to your opponent if they don't control a monster. And if they do control a monster, then every single monster on their side of the field loses a thousand points during each end phase, which is really cool. We then play a single copy of Arc Rebellion Dragon. Arc Rebellion Dragon can get humongous in this deck and is super easy to summon. Um, and it also can't be destroyed by card effects. One copy of Dark Requiem Dragon. Again, really easy to summon. You're always going to summon this with your copy of the Phantom Knights Rank Up Magic Launch with your copy of your Dark Rebellion. This card is, these are really pivotal to the deck and really good for the strategy that you can use the copy of Dark Rebellion, detach both materials, reduce the opponent's monsters down by half, and then use the copy of the Rank Up Magic Launch to then upgrade into a copy of Dark Dark Requiem, which will give you a negate on your side of the field, which is pretty good to be able to attack over a monster as well. We then play a single copy of Cyber Dragon Infinity. 
Infinity's really good. I've actually been debating if I wanted to keep Infinity in here because I was thinking about throwing in Duo Don King Cal Yuga instead of the copy of Infinity or the next card. One of the two I've been thinking about dropping to put in Cal Yuga so I can use it to go into really easily to cold wave the entire field. But if you want to play the Infinity, definitely do so. It's a really good card. And then you play a single copy of Evil Sworn Nightmare. Nightmare is the card that I've been thinking about dropping to put in the copy of Cal Yuga so I can go into Cal Yuga really easily in this deck to be able to just make a 3,500 beat stick that can also cold wave the entire field. But Nightmare for now is just easy to summon and easier to get on the field. And it can basically book a moon a monster uh, when your opponent special summons a monster twice, which is really good to be able to just book a moon those cards to make it so they can't um, use them as material. So I still am liking the copy of the Nightmare because it's just so much simpler than what the Cal Yuga is to get out because you can end with this card and then just not worry about what your opponent's going to summon especially if they're going to try and summon dragoons you can flip the materials face down um before they summon the anaconda and it just totally stops the whole combo so that's it for the deck guys i hope you did enjoy it it's a really fun deck to play around with i highly recommend that you guys give this deck a try um i love raid raptors they're kind of like mechanical black wings and super super fun to play with i i love this deck it's so cool and it's so many changes that they've done to this deck in the uh phantom rage set it's just awesome i love what they're doing with Yu-Gi-Oh! now that they're putting nostalgic cards on the front of packs especially with blazing vortex coming right around the corner um and this deck is just one of the really good winners of what they're doing right now in Yu-Gi-Oh. So anyways, guys, this is Darkroom Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on the same comment bar notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below because we have some awesome rewards, guys, like getting your name description for every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, or even getting requested to deck profile every single one that you're a patron along with test stands, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.